Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 7 of my Industrial Revolution 3 playthrough. In this episode, we are going to start making bronze, which is going to send us into the Bronze Age. Enjoy. We're just about at the point where we're going to want to start researching more stuff because we've more or less done everything that we can here. And we might as well just do everything we can because one thing about IR3 is that each tier of research and materials is kind of blocked off from each other at very predictable intervals. So clearly, the Bronze Age is the next blocking tier. So we might as well do everything leading up to the Bronze Age. And one thing we can do is build a very steampunky mono wheel, a quirky personal vehicle, no weapons and minimal cargo capacity. However, it's fast. So we'll grab that and we might as well grab the steam loader. We're probably not going to use very many of them. It works as you would expect that it either puts a full load of items into a machine or chest or outputs a full load, but the difference with IR3 is that they are no longer energy free. That you actually have to pay electricity for it, and it's actually substantial when they're all going. Of course, in the beginning, we can only do steam loaders, and I probably won't bother with them because we don't need that kind of throughput right now. That we're probably going to wait until we have electricity for that, but nonetheless, we might as well research it, and the same thing with the steam stacker as well and what the stacker does as it sounds it stacks ingot shaped things or as the description says ingots and other blocky items so if it looks like it's a block it can probably be stacked and that will increase efficiency by 4x as far as putting them on belts and that also requires electricity it doesn't really help here because we'd have to unstack them i mean we could but the throughput of this uh, minibus here is just not fast enough for that to really matter. So we probably won't need to do stacking anytime soon either. However, although we are not running short on our tin, it would improve the yield of the tin if we did the same thing as we did with copper and built a setup like this. And in fact, since we've built the setup already, why not try to copy it? In fact, we can probably just grab the entire thing and just see what it looks like when you place it somewhere because IR3 automatically sets recipes that we won't actually need to change any recipes in this at all. That if we just put it somewhere and then feed it with materials, it will just start working. And because of our very limited space, because of all of these materials being right here and then all of these cliffs also being right here, we kind of have to be choosy about where we put this. So how about we put it kind of all the way up here. I really don't want to like mash them in there, but what choice do we have here? Not many. Maybe it would be smarter to have them like this instead and try to actually push them out a little bit. So sure, we'll do that. And while we're here, get rid of any nearby trees. And we kind of need some light in here too. As the factory expands, that's going to be more and more of a problem. But when we get to the Bronze Age, we'll actually be able to start making lights. So we've got that going for us. We've completed the mono wheel research. We don't immediately need that vehicle, but nonetheless, it's nice to have. Because at some point, we're going to need to start uh, expanding and going out into the wilderness and seeing what's out there. When we go into the Bronze Age, we're definitely going to need more tin than we have now. So it's not a bad idea that we are improving the output of tin because we are soon going to need it. So in goes the tin and this actually needed to be split where coal went to the left but I suppose we should do to the right and say tin because we could have different fuels. But actually it kind of doesn't matter because of the way that these furnaces work that they'll just pick up whatever resources they can get their hands on so it actually, believe it or not, does not mess anything up by putting in both the crushed tin and regular tin in there that it will actually work itself out in the end. Well, with the exception of these ones down here that don't have any fuel in them, clearly it won't work out in that situation. But let's try to fill them up a little bit with fuel to show how that would work. And now that it has access to fuel, it's just going to go through the tin ore. And then once it's gone through that, it will then pick up the crushed tin. So the recipes automatically change based on what is required. And since we have way too many tin ingots, we'll step on the are you sure plate and put them all back on the belts. And this is one of the many things that shows me how well designed 
that IR3 actually is, in the sense where you can use the exact same build, but not only that, but you don't even need to change the recipes, that the recipes are automatic. You could just copy the build, and all you do is put the ore in, and then everything happens automatically. The only things you might need to change are things like getting rid of extra resources or any splitters or anything that you might be using. Other than that, it is automatic, and those splitters are on you and your design, where the actual machines are working as they should. Let's come down here and leave a little bit of space. And we might as well let them connect right there. I mean, it doesn't hurt anything to be weird and just have that little loop there. So let's run through everything and fill up our inventory on anything we're lacking. And in fact, that's basically all of it. Where the entire minibus has caught itself up with every resource we asked for. And also, all of those resources are full stacks. So looking pretty good. Now that we have all of our initial copper resources automated, it's time for us to leave the Copper Age and enter the Bronze Age. This will unlock the Stone Alloy Furnace. It's basically a stone furnace with tin plates added to it. The thing that makes the Alloy Furnaces different is that you actually have to select the recipe rather than it being automatic. To show that it's an Alloy Furnace, it has this little, I don't know what you'd call it, like a Mickey Mouse shape. And also, we have it here as well signifying that this is an alloy recipe. To make 12 bronze ingots, we add eight copper and four tin. And of course it has to be done in an alloy furnace. And also important to note is that the recipe pollution is only 50%. And this generally applies to all of the alloys to where the main pollution comes from making the input resources and then actually alloying them doesn't create that much more pollution. Of course, it also adds the ability to make it from scrap, which we will get to later. And then it unlocks all of these items. Yes, we did just finish automating a bunch of this stuff and now we have new things to automate. But a neat thing about IR3 is that the recipes don't actually change all that much. Yes, we're making new items, but a bronze plate is still made from a bronze ingot. Same for bronze rods, except we get two of them. Rivets come from a bronze rod. Pellets come from an ingot. The bronze capped beam is the same as the copper capped beam, except now the resources are bronze. You can make a bronze chest with a storage size of 20, but the recipe is the same, it's just the resources are different. And of course, we can do a repair pack if we need it, but we haven't built the previous one either. And also we can make better cartridges. Since we've already done the work of making most of these items, expanding to bronze is actually just as easy as just copying existing builds and placing them down. The one new item that's made here is the reinforced bronze plate, which is just two bronze plates and a rivet. So we'll hit that and we might as well start researching things that the bronze would go into. So when the time comes, we can use some of it. One is the heavy armor, lots of reinforced bronze plates, but it gives us the next tier of armor and we get a 20 inventory size bonus. Surprisingly, the armor we have now, the light armor, does not give you an inventory bonus. You think it would give you a bonus of 10 to be linear, but it doesn't. However, this does give us a bigger equipment grid, which means more steam robots. We can finally make those scatterbots I've been talking about. Their lives are brutal and short, but in their own dim way, they love you. <laughs> I'm sure they will come in handy. Glass is the thing we need to work on next to move down the line. So IR3 is very materials locked, where in the beginning, the first thing we had to do was charcoal, even though we really didn't need it for anything. Really what we were going for was the crusher. And then the next limiting factor is bronze. And then the next one is glass. And then the next one will be iron. And it kind of works like that. So every time you have a new material, it's a good idea to research broadly as opposed to narrowly. So you can hit all of the resources that are directly related to the thing you just made. We will also be able to make bronze furnaces. Improved furnaces means improved materials. Improved materials means improved furnaces. You want furnaces. It's a stone furnace with bronze items added to it, so it now becomes more expensive. It is twice as fast with double the pollution and double the energy consumption. So you might be thinking, what's the benefit? There isn't one, really. It doesn't really have an energy improvement you think it would, but it doesn't. Nonetheless, it is steampunk themed, and if we got rid of our stone furnaces, then we would be officially out of the Stone Age completely, so we probably should. And it certainly makes builds smaller. And they give you the burner version of it with the heat lines, and they give you the 
alloy furnace version with the little Mickey Mouse on there. However, it is also a burner. And both of them come from the stone versions. And finally, there is the heavy roller. But I'll probably wait on that, considering we haven't even made the mono wheel yet. And research will begin. I'm not sure exactly how fast this is going to go. It's probably going to go reasonably fast, considering we have lots of materials now. One thing I did do is I switched these assemblers making bricks from the big one to the little one, because the little ones actually can make the bricks. Both assemblers are the same speed, but having little ones means you have more of them. And, uh, of course we need more bricks for more stone paths. But another thing I was thinking about is we should probably upgrade all of our miners to steam because I had to go through all of this effort here in order to prioritize our miners to use the crushed coal, but we could have avoided all of that if we just switched them to steam. It would also make the setups a little more dense because you wouldn't need to have a space in here for fuel, and you also wouldn't even need to have the fuel delivered at all, so they could be placed very close together as if they were electric miners. So we should probably switch all these, and of course it's going to make us start to run out of steam, and in fact our steam is already getting kind of low, which is funny. So, because this is only going to make it worse, let's double up our steam production here. Luckily it's pretty copyable. Just put another one in, and we just need to make the items that go into it. Except not that. Too late. <laughs> it didn't click fast enough. <laughs> oh well. We have an extra offshore pump. I'm sure we'll use it pretty quickly here. So we need a short steam and a short water. And there we go. Doubled up our steam again, but I'm sure we're going to need even more than this once we switch all these miners around. Well, we need miners to make miners because a cool thing about upgrading from the burner miners to the steam miners is that the burner miners go into them. So all we need to do is add four steam pipes and we can convert any miner we pick up to run on steam. So, all of this is probably going to need to be pulled up in some way. And we have this chest dumping the copper, but we're probably going to have to switch that around. And that is one unfortunate thing of switching these setups, is that a lot of times you end up having to rebuild those logistics. But it is what it is, and unfortunately our robots aren't terribly fast. But we can help them, because they're mainly spending time picking up all these items on the belts. Now that we've picked up those four miners, we can switch them over to use steam. And this will cut the coal consumption Basically, by two-thirds, by doing this, it will create slightly more pollution, but significantly less coal will be required. Like one there, one there, and I guess just right here for now. It always bothers me when you're dealing with undergrounds and you have one, because it means there's another one just sitting somewhere. And there we go. They are all running on steam now. And out of curiosity, these four alone will use the steam out of essentially one of these. We are gaining steam again, though, so... So far, so good, and that does certainly simplify the belt setup by quite a bit. So let's pick all of this up now. It'll come down, but of course it's going to have some amount of coal in there, but we also might want to expand it at some point, so maybe we should basically send it down as far as it'll go. Where to the right goes the tin, and to the left will go the extra coal. And let's do another one-way valve. Can't really have too many of these just to prioritize the steam and keep the different setups from being too greedy. All right, now I think it's time for coal here. This is the the big mess we're trying to fix. So one, two, three, four, and yeah, if we put it right here, it will not get any of the tin. It's going to be quite precise here, trying to maximize our yields of these different items without having a bunch of extra byproduct items. Like that one right there. Okay, one more. And we almost drained the spot that it was uh, mining from. Let's do this, and also, it'll just go straight through so it won't have a priority. So, I believe that finishes our conversion to steam miners. Certainly looks a little cleaner. And we are making more steam, and, you know, 80 is what the set point is, so as long as it is around 80, then things are pretty good. And we can run through here and replace anything we have spent. It is quite convenient. The one thing that we haven't built yet, that we now have all of the basic resources for, is the mono wheel. And <laughs> compared to crafting things before, that was very easy. And it had an achievement attached to it. So the mono wheel is a steam powered item, just like our rope reports, and it is powered in the same way. 
we could use the trunk to make any requests that we want and we can do drive-by logistics with those requests. Also, it requires fuel and it tells you all of the fuel types that go into it and steam cell is one of them. But you don't actually have to put the steam cells into the trunk that if you are driving the vehicle, it will pull them from your inventory if they are available. So by getting in here, it kind of takes a second, but there we go. Oops. Well, I guess we need a repair pack now. But, ah, no, no, no. <laughs> it's very fast, but it feels like the turning is weird. And also you see how we drive over the plate and it totally did logistics for us. But it, it feels like it turns very slowly compared to the car. We just made a mess, so it's time for some repair packs. The copper ones, his copper plate, wooden beam, and rod. We don't have wooden beams in our inventory, but that's fine. We can just handcraft this as required. We don't need very many of these. And that's how it works. It will put steam cells back into your inventory as it uses them up. So as long as you're using the same fuel for other things, this is your first exploration vehicle. And uh, we don't really need to explore right now. I mean, there are biters out there. And the pollution is... It's getting close to them, but it's not quite there yet. One thing you'll notice, looking at the map, is that iron does not spawn near you. So iron is probably the first thing you're going to have to explore to find in your factory. And the mono wheel will definitely assist you in finding it quicker. But for now though, we can just leave it there. But other than that, it looks like now it's time to get into bronze. And it's pretty straightforward, we just need the alloy furnaces and the ingots of both types. One thing to note is that our setup here for making copper was sized around making 7.5 copper plates a second because that's what fits on our bus here. But now by making tin, we have a new thing to spend it on. So we're probably going to want to expand our copper production soon here. Tin will probably hold up because you really don't use much tin until bronze. So we'll have to see. Oops, that belt is not connected up all the way. There we go, and neither is that one. So how about for now, since we have yellow belts and half of the belt is going to go towards our bus, how about we try to aim for using up the other half? So let's use Helmod to make a new plan. The goal is bronze. We have an input of our 7.5 copper, but for some reason it doesn't let you set that. I don't know, there's something weird about Helmod these days. But anyway, we'll set the output to 7.5, which means we will need our 24 furnaces. Although we don't need to make 24 because immediately after making these, we will have access to bronze, which will cut the number of furnaces we need in half. But it's not really going to change the pollution or anything. But nonetheless, since we are about to have them, we could stand to have a few less because otherwise we'll have so many extra stone furnaces that we won't need for anything. So it's as simple as making 12 furnaces. And for now, they'll have to be the stone variety. It is a little slow because we have to make these wooden beams, but I don't want to automate that yet since we haven't automated making trees. Oh, that's a lot of random junk. That's how this works. Consume random junk, receive random junk. And we can put this anywhere. It is going to create some pollution and of course it is going to require the copper and tin. So maybe somewhere right here, but man, we're getting close to biters. This won't be very expandable, but it doesn't really need to be because there's nothing else you're really going to do with bronze other than make it. So it would probably kind of go in here. So we need to put six of them in a line and it's cool that these do have a different graphic where you see the tin that got added. And doing it is going to be a little annoying with burner inserters because they would have to have access to fuel on both sides. So let's say we had an input belt here and it had coal and one of the items. Well, the inserter that picks it up would certainly get the fuel and the inserter that drops it off would get the fuel. But whatever inserter picked up the other item would not. So I think in this situation, we are stuck with using steam inserters, at least for part of it. So these need to actually be spaced one further. One of these belts is going to have the coal. Let's just say it's the first one. So those can be regular inserters, but then these have to be the longs. And then this other belt can be the input of the regular ores, 
where it can be steamed there. And this other one, because it's long, it also has to be steamed. And I can already tell that because of the position of all of these, that those burner inserters are just not going to work. And one annoying thing about these steam inserters is that you can't fast replace them on top of other inserters. You have to pick them up first, and I imagine that's because they've got pipes. And then we connect them all together. <laughs> and that gets that covered, and then the output. But in this situation, it actually can be a burner because it will leach the fuel. And we have a recipe to set. That's the first time that we've had to set that. And yeah, I tried to uh, do the shift and left click to copy this down and it says it won't fit because the keybind is trying to move the furnace. So when you have to copy a recipe a bunch of times, just hold shift and move the mouse. Just uh, know that you can't move your character if you are using the picker dollies in that way. But I think it's the better keybind because, man, picker dollies are nice. Cool, we have completed most of that research just about in time to actually put them to use. Let's hit the heavy roller as well. It is similar to the crawler from Angel Bob's, where it is just a big, slow vehicle with no weapons. But it has a pretty big equipment grid and... Specifically, it has a huge inventory of 80 squares, so we can definitely use this for drive-by logistics compared to the mono wheel, which just isn't very good at it, despite it being much faster. But nonetheless, we'll hit that, and that's the last thing we can research without getting new materials such as glass. And the spaghetti will continue, and I don't know if we want to put it right there, because then we're going to have to jump over all those pipes. So let's do this instead. And to avoid too much spaghetti here, Actually, how about we do this? And there is a torch there, but we can move it. <laughs> Inventory is uh, constantly getting full. How about we put most of that wood into the mono wheel? We can split the copper here. Then they will both combine and go in. And the other one needs to be a fuel source. So the way we could do this is by having two splitters. There'll be one that's in the front that splits both things evenly, and then the second one will say to the left goes the copper ore, but we don't care about the copper ore. What we care about is the fuel, whatever it ends up being, but we know copper is always going to be here, but the solid fuel choice might change. But then now if we do that, we will pull off just the item we want, and we won't have to worry about which items are actually in the belt or even what side of the belt that they're on. Let's put another steam tank isolator in here. Just to make sure that this keeps running, even if we are low on steam because of other resources. But in it goes. More cool glows. And it's a very slow crafting time. 48 seconds. But selecting all of this tells us we're getting our 3.75, which is half of our output that we want. But we're just about to make the bronze ingots, which will then allow us to make the bronze furnaces here. And we could handcraft those items, but... We should probably try to automate them. And there we go, the inserters leached the coal. So now we have bronze on the belts. We need to send it up this long path here. And it seems like this one will work best. Because up it goes, and then it will take up this belt right here, but we only want to take up half of it to leave the other half for the next material. I guess we'll just leave it like that because that will fully populate the belt, not that it matters, but it will create a buffer which will be nice. Okay then, it's time to automate some bronze items. But that's gonna have to wait till the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.